the Parrot Refactoring Carter on polymorphism. Yeah, I know, it's a truly awful pun, but this is actually one of my favorite coding exercises. And the point of any code carter is it's a small, fun programming exercise that gives you the satisfaction of writing some really good code and some skill and more insight every time you repeat it. Parrot really delivers on all those points. Let me explain and tempt you to try it out for yourself. Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer and creator of Saman Coaching. On my channel, you can find content for developers and technical coaches. If you like what you see, please do hit like and subscribe. Also, check out my Patreon. In this code, you have a parrot class. And parrots fly more or less quickly, depending on some completely made up and weird variables. Like, if it's that well-known breed, the Norwegian blue, you might be forgiven for being a little confused. Because the speed of the parrot depends on whether it is nailed and what voltage you have applied. Unusual parameters for a bird, don't you think? If you've not seen the famous dead parrot sketch from Monty Python, then you might want to check that out. Michael Palin and John Cleese with absolutely classic comedy. And it's a major source of inspiration for this code. Hello, Foley! Wakey, wakey! But you don't actually need to know anything about that to do the exercise. What you've got is essentially some weird business logic and slightly dodgy design. If you've ever worked on badly factored code, you'll probably feel right at home. Often, a refactoring exercise begins with noticing a code smell. That is a surface indication that's easily visible, which might be caused by an underlying design problem. For the Parrot Refactoring Carter, the code smell you notice is not so much that the Parrot is pining for the fjords, it's some repeated switches, or switch by type code. It's a sign that there's a missing abstraction in the design, because these type codes could usefully be different classes, and then you could use polymorphism instead of a switch. So yeah, you can see where the idea for the exercise came from. Polymorphism? I have to say, I didn't make this up myself. I originally based this code on one of the examples in Martin Fowler's refactoring book. Also a classic, although perhaps a little more serious than the dead parrot sketch. <laughs> Let's talk about the design you're aiming for. Polymorphism instead of a switch. You want to have a different class for each type of parrot so that the behavior changes with polymorphic methods rather than this switch. And both a strategy of inheritance or composition would work here. So either you get a common parrot superclass with subclasses, or a parrot interface that the various types of parrot implement. At the end, there should be only one switch on type code left in the code, a factory method usually, where you construct the instances of all the different types of parrot. Each one of those subtypes is going to implement get speed and get cry, and take into account their own particular business rules. So in the case of the Norwegian blue, that would be whether anyone has applied sufficient voltage to achieve a vroom through the cage bars. The other parrot subclasses shouldn't need to know those details about voltage and nails. You end up with a more loosely coupled design with a separation of concerns. And it would actually be easier to add a new type of parrot if you found you needed one. What I really like about the parrot refactoring carter is it allows you to explore polymorphism and the strategies to achieve that. And another big benefit is that you can also take full advantage of your refactoring tools and get really smooth and fluent with all those shortcuts. Because you're not going to just jump from the original design to a new design that's perfect with everything broken in between. You need to carefully chart a course through intermediate designs, running the tests and seeing them pass after every step you're going to be applying a series of smaller refactorings to achieve a larger change. And this is the kind of exercise that you do more than once. You get faster and better at solving it the more times you do it, and you discover more things that your tool can do for you. I've done this exercise at various coding dojos and learning hours together with others, and I've definitely learned new ways to solve it 
and new sequences of refactoring steps. It's helped me also to find out more about the capabilities of my tools. So I really recommend you have a go at this, one of my top code carters. Head over to my GitHub and get a copy. It comes with a good suite of tests and I recommend you run them frequently as you work. Try it more than once. Use different kinds of polymorphism. Gain some more fluency with those shortcuts. Happy coding.